My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, we're going to DIY a modular four-way tire inflator. Now you'll see what I mean. I said this before, but I'm one of those find a need and meet it kind of guys where I don't just like to buy a whole bunch of gear just because everyone says I should have that stuff and then find out later that I never even used it. Every trip that I go on teaches me where I am lacking and that's when I usually address that issue. Case in point, last overlanding trip we were on, at the end of the trail we were airing back up and I was borrowing my friend's air compressor. Now his air compressor is not one of those hardcore beefy ones, just your generic air compressor that you can buy at your local hardware store. And it was just taking so long just to air up one of my tires. And I just looked at that and I said, this is not happening again. Number one, I need to get my own air compressor or maybe an air tank. And then I also need a four-way tire inflator so I can do all of these all at one time and call it a day. Be in and be out and be done. So I went online and quickly learned that four-way tire inflator kits are pretty expensive. They'll run somewhere between three to $400. And I'm looking at that stuff going, I can probably make one myself. They're just some air hoses, just some fittings. I'm pretty sure I can figure this out. But also I think I have a better way too. Plus, it's going to be modular. So what do I mean by modular? I mean I want a system that I can plug into an air compressor or an air tank, and if I need to inflate all four tires at the same time, I'll just put that attachment on and it'll do that. But in those instances where I need just a single line, like if I need to fill up an air mattress or something, then I'll just put a single line attachment on and I can do it with that without having to bring out this spider web of hoses. And that is what we're going to attempt to build today. All right, before we actually start building this thing, let me do the one thing that I wish I would have seen in other videos that would have helped me out tremendously. And that is a diagram. Let me get a diagram going so I can show you how I'm actually laying all of this out. Now at the heart of the system, and this is where I'm kind of going rogue from all the other videos I've seen, is this dual head air chuck inflator gauge. In those DIY videos, they normally build this out themselves. They take a T fitting, something similar to this, and then they put a gauge at the top, and then they put a shutoff valve on one side. And this works. If you want to do it this way, it's compact, it's small, but I kind of didn't want to build that out. I wanted to just go ahead and get something that's already built out, and that's why I have this. This already has the gauge, and then also the lever on this is a lot beefier, and I can basically press and depress it and however I need, versus this, which is just a shutoff valve. You would turn it on and turn it off, turn it on, turn it off you kind of get a little bit more control with this. So if I start off with something like this and build my system off of this, I think that just might be a little bit easier. Then obviously you have your hose. This is a 3 8 inch, 50 foot hose, 300 max PSI. So that should be able to handle whatever kind of air pressure I'm getting out of the compressor or even compressed air. Now both of these, Harbor Freight. And I know what you're thinking, why would you get this stuff if, you know, Harbor Freight has this reputation of being cheap and it might break apart on you? Well, here's the thing. This is the first time I'm making anything like this and I don't even know if it's gonna work. And what I don't want is spend a lot of money on like a Flexzilla hose or like an ARB inflator gauge, cut it up and modify it and then come to find out it doesn't even work at all. And now I've wasted over $100 in parts. So we're gonna try it with the cheap stuff first. And if it works, awesome. Then I'll run with it for a while. And if somehow or the other, the host busts or the inflator gauge stops working, well, I can keep all the fittings that held all of this together and then just upgrade the hose or the inflator gauge with something a little bit more reliable. But anyway, the diagram, the heart of the system, the inflator gauge. Now on one end of the inflator gauge over here, I'm gonna have about a two foot hose coming right out of it and then plug directly into our air supply, whether that's an air compressor or an air tank. Now, the reason why I'm doing about two feet is because wherever I mount the compressor, I want this to be able to come and extend out of that a little bit before it snakes off to the four different tires. But also, if you plan to use this with an air tank, you want some separation between the gauge and the actual tank because the CO2 that's coming out of that tank, if it's too close to this, it's going to freeze this up and it's going to bind on you. So what you want is you want some sort of distance between the tank and this so it doesn't do that. Now on the other end, the part that goes to whatever it is we're putting air into, I'm going to add one of these quick connect couplers. The quick connect coupler will just allow me to take the two different attachments that we're making and it'll allow me to swap them out really quickly and easily because it just 
connects just like that. And from there, we're gonna build the two attachments that work with the system. We have our single line, and then we have our four-way inflator. Now the single line, that's super easy. I'm just gonna take a piece of hose, and on one end of the hose, we're gonna put one of these plugs, and that plug is the one that goes into one of these quick connect couplers really easily. And then on the other end, we're gonna put one of these tire chuck with a lock-on lever. Basically, it's one of those things that go into the Schrader valve, you'll be able to lock it down, and then I'll be able to inflate whatever it is I'm inflating as long as it has a Schrader valve. Now for the four-way inflator, that's also really easy. It's just gonna be a little bit more involved as far as measuring out all the hoses and making sure that it reaches all four tires. We're gonna start with a short hose, and on that short hose, we're gonna have one of these plugs. Same kind of plug that plugs directly into one of these quick connect couplers really easily. And on the other end of that short hose, it's gonna go to a T-fitting. This T-fitting will just allow me to have hoses to go to one side of the vehicle and then another hose going to the other side of the vehicle. That will reach all the way to the rear tires. But somewhere along that line, we'll have two other T-fittings that will allow me to connect that line to the two front tires. And that's basically the system. And at the end of those hoses, instead of using one of these tire chuck levers, which is really not gonna be super secure, I'm only using this for like air mattresses and things like that, we are gonna go with the locking board chucks. This is just a little bit more industrial, just a little bit more secure. Plus, the moment you put this on your valve stem, air doesn't start leaking right away. So this just makes it a lot easier to kind of lock on to your tires and get a good and secure fit. And that's pretty much the system, and that is why I'm calling it modular, because it'll allow us to switch from a single line system to a four line system really, really easily. So let's just get it built out because I'm excited to see if this is even gonna work. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build out the main part of the system. I have the inflator right here. And as I mentioned before, on one end, we're gonna have a two foot hose that will plug directly into our air supply. I have that hose right here. I've already cut it down to size and Whenever you buy a hose, on each end, they will usually have this kind of reinforcement on it just to prevent kinks from happening. So since we have two, we're gonna utilize one to go directly into our main air supply just to kind of give it a little bit more reinforcement. And then on the other side, that's what's gonna plug into this inflator. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use one of these plugs. This is a male plug that will go right into here, and then this will just plug directly into there, and then we're gonna use a hose clamp to hold this down into place. But to do that, you gotta make sure that you put some plumber's tape uh, on any type of thread that you're threading in just to prevent leaks from happening. So let's go do that right now. Now on the other end, we're gonna to need to put another one of those kind of fittings as well, which will allow us to plug this into our air compressor or air tank. All right, and finally, to finish off this system, on this end, we're gonna go ahead and put that quick connect coupler. And that's it, that's pretty much the heart of the system built out. Got my plug right here that will go into any standard air compressor or air tank. Then I got my coupler on the other end that I'll be able to quickly connect the different attachments to. So let's go ahead and make those attachments. All right, so the first attachment we're gonna make is the four-way inflator. I wanna start with the four-way inflator because I wanna get it cut up, sized up, and assembled, and then whatever hose I have left over after that, that's what we're gonna use for the single line. And how we're gonna measure it is we're gonna use some rope. This is basically gonna just act as the dummy hose. I'll be able to route everything and know how much I need. And what I did was I took the main part of the system and I laid it out on the hood. And I laid it out in this orientation because on a Jeep, Whenever you get an onboard air compressor and you're gonna mount it in the engine bay, it usually falls somewhere around over here. So I wanted to make sure that the end of this main system can plug in and then that will go over there and then the line will basically begin around this area. However, if I get an air compressor that's not on board and it's something that I need to plug into the battery, I needed to make sure that that also will reach over there. So that's how pretty much I'm laying this thing out. Let's just get it measured. All right, so we got our three pieces measured and cut up. Now remember, I only measured one side of the vehicle. We also need a line going to the other side of the vehicle as well in the same length. So each of these pieces, we're gonna need to cut two of them out of the hose. All 
right, now that we have our hoses cut up, let's go ahead and assemble it. This is just for the one side of the vehicle. Then we'll go ahead and do the other side. Here is the long piece. This is the one that goes from the rear of the tire all the way to somewhere near the front of the tire. And then this is the extension that goes from this piece to the front of the tire. And then this is the middle piece that will go basically from these two areas all the way to our inflator. And as I showed in the diagram, this will be connected with a T-barb. And the best way to put these barbs on, honestly, is to use some soapy water. It just makes everything so much easier to put together. And then we'll go ahead and clamp them all down with some hose clamps. So here's both of our sides put together now. This one goes to one side of the vehicle. This one goes to the other side of the vehicle. Now we just need to put this last hose into here and then this will go to the inflator and we're gonna connect that with one of these plugs. And that'll take care of that and then we will add the board chucks at the end of each of these lines. All right, the system is completed. All we gotta do now is add a board chuck at the end of each of these lines and we're gonna connect it using another barb. Here's a barb on one end, it's one fourth fitting that will fit right inside this and then this will go to your hose. Again, using hose clamps. All right guys, that is it. That is the four-way inflator. So as you can see, this end will plug right into our inflator right here with a quick connect. And then, following the line, this will go on one side of the vehicle and this one will go on the other side. And then as it snakes down, this one will go to one tire. This one goes to the other tire. And keeps going, going. And then finally, to the rears. Boom, and that is the system. Let's work on the single line now. For the single line, I'm just gonna go ahead and use whatever hose I have left over. I went and measured it and I was surprised to find I still had about a good 12 feet of hose left, which is great because that means that whatever it is that I need to inflate, I don't need to bring that item so close to my vehicle wherever the air compressor is. Now, the way this is gonna work is on one end, we're gonna put one of these plugs. Again, this is one of those plugs that connects into a quick connect coupler. Now this one has a male end at the end of it, so the barb that we're gonna use is a female end. I'm gonna put these two together like this, and then this will go into the plug like that, and that will connect to my inflator. Now because the inflator will be about 12 feet away from whatever it is that I'm airing up, we need to get a chuck that's able to lock down. So here is a air chuck that when you put this on a Schrader valve, this can lock in place and then it won't move. This one has a female end, so the barb that we need to use for that is a male end barb. So the male end barb will go into here, and that will go into the other end of the hose, and that will be our single line. So let's get that built out. And there you have it, the complete modular air inflator system. Got my four-way tire connector over here, got my single line over here, and at the heart of it all, our inflator with built-in pressure gauge. So let's go test this thing and see if it actually holds up. All right, it looks like I got this air pressure down really, really low. It's not even 10 PSI. That's really extreme. It's not something I would be rocking on the trail, but this is a good chance for us to see how fast this thing can air up from five PSI all the way back to 35. All right, so I got my system set up to my pancake compressor. Now, obviously, this is not the system that I'll be taking with me on the trail. However, I feel like this is a perfect medium between having a regular air compressor and a full-blown air tank. If this system can handle this pancake compressor, then anything I throw at it on the trail is going to be no problem at all. So let's go ahead and try it out. 
to try out the single line. As you can see, no pressure in my water tank. Modular air inflator, huh? Am I right? I think it's pretty awesome. I can now fill up all four tires at the same time, but also switch out to the single line anytime I need it for that, because let's face it, there's a lot of things that need to be inflated, and not just my ego, where we don't want to have to pull out a whole loom of hoses, this humongous system, just to fill up something so simple, and this system allows you to do that. Got my list right here. I wanna make sure that I give you everything that I used and I don't wanna miss a thing. Hey, that's an Aerosmith song. Now, first thing you'll need is an inflator. Got mine at Harbor Freight for $12. And then obviously you'll need your hose, at least 50 feet and no less than 120 PSI max, minus 300. I know it's a little bit overkill, but I didn't want my hose to bust. I feel like that's a rap song. Now what you spend on hose is totally up to you. I mean, you can go get the Flexzilla one for like 80 bucks, but I got mine at Harbor Freight. Again, 50 feet, 300 PSI max, and I got that for 18 bucks. Then you'll need four bore chucks. This is what clamps onto the valve stem of each of your tires, and the ones I got are awesome. They're super secure. They engulf the valve stem really, really well, and air just doesn't start leaking out of them. They're way better than those cheapy ones that you might see at the gas station when you're filling up your tires. I just don't like those, because you clamp them down and they pop out, and just get these, and I know they're a little bit more pricey. On Amazon, they are $12.25 each. So for four of them, it'll cost you 49 bucks. That's actually the most expensive thing on this price list, but to me, it's totally worth it. Now for the single line, you're gonna need an air chuck for that as well. And for that one, you don't have to go crazy and buy the $12.25 one. That's just a little bit overkill. All you need is just a simple one because all you're doing with it is filling up stuff like air mattresses and pressurized water cans. Just make sure that whatever you get has a lock on it so you can put it on the Schrader valve and it won't pop off and it'll just kind of lock in place. I got mine at Harbor Freight for four bucks. Then you're gonna need one coupler and two plugs. The coupler will go onto the main unit itself and then the two plugs will go to the two different attachments attachments, the four-way inflator and the single line. This will allow you to switch out the attachments easily. Now, you could just get a whole set of this on Amazon. It comes with two couplers and a bunch of plugs, and it's only 15 bucks. Then you're gonna need some barbs. First, you need three T-barbs. You can actually buy a pack of three T-barbs on Amazon for $8.50. Then you're gonna need eight single barbs. This is what basically attaches the hose to all of your other fittings. Just make sure that what you get is for a 3 8 inch hose that goes to a 1 4 inch MPT fitting. Everything you're doing here is pretty much on a one-fourth thread. So just make sure you remember three-eighths for the hose part and then one-fourth for all the fittings that you are screwing together. You can buy a pack of 10 barbs on Amazon for $12.50. You don't need 10. You only need eight. But it's a lot cheaper to go this route because if you buy each of them individually, they're like $3.50. Now on my end, it turned out one of the plugs that I had needed a female barb. So I actually needed seven male barbs and one female barb. But if you can try to make everything outside of the barbs be female, then you can use all the male barbs and just call it a day. And then finally, to hold the entire system together to make sure that these hoses are secured on the barbs, you're gonna need some hose clamps. Now, I'm not gonna count for you how many hose clamps I actually use. My suggestion, just buy a pack of 20 of them on Amazon for like eight bucks. That's a lot more than you're going to need, but it's better that way anyway, because sometimes some of these hose clamps are defective, where I don't know if you've had this experience, where you'll be turning them and they're just stuck in the middle. So if one of them gets stuck and they're defective, then you have like a whole pack and you can get another one. And that's it. That's the entire price list. Total, $130.50. 
Yeah. Compare this DIY video to all the other DIY four-way tire inflator videos, and they're gonna give you about the same price too. That's why people are doing it, because it's a hell of a lot better than buying a pre-made four-way tire inflator for like $250 to $300, and you can even switch out to a single line. This allows you that kind of flexibility at like 50 to 60% cheaper than what you would get if you bought a pre-made one. All you gotta do is put in some elbow grease and make it yourself. Now this is not gonna fill up your tires faster. I just wanna make sure that's clear. If you're just using a standard automotive air compressor that you use in your other vehicles or for emergencies only, you're gonna be there for a while. I mean, you're talking about filling four humongous off-road tires with this little tiny air compressor. You're gonna be there a lot longer than you need to be, or you might even burn out that compressor, like it just can't handle it. You're gonna wanna move that up to something a little bit more robust, like a Smitty Built or an ARB twin onboard air compressor, or if you really wanna go ham, go and get like a power tank or any kind of CO2 tank. This is more for the convenience. It's the convenience of plugging the system up to all four tires and then having one location and then just filling it all up together versus you going to each tire and having to fill that up. Plus, plus, what I really love about this is when you plug in this system to all four tires, it regulates the PSI on all the tires. Anytime I went to fill up my tires, I would go to this one, okay, got that to 35. Then go over here, okay, got that to 35. And I did that all around, then when I turn the vehicle on, my sensors are saying this one's 33, this one's 34, this one's 35, just because even if my gauge said 35, it's still a little bit off. When I did it with this though, because it distributes the air evenly and it's giving me one reading on that gauge, once I unplugged and I turned the vehicle on, it said 33 all around. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. So that is definitely a plus. But that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say outside of that. I know that I can't wait to get out on the trail and try it. But I do hope that this gave you a lot of ideas to build your own. It'll save you a lot of money, especially if you've been wanting a four-way inflator build one. It's easy. It's not hard at all. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. This was the very first video of 2022. I had so much fun making it. My name is Asia Samson, and I will see you next time. Happy New Year, everybody.